that, let's discuss it with Republican Congressman Warren Davidson of Ohio. He is a member of the House Freedom Caucus. How will he vote? Let's ask him. Good morning, Congressman. Hi, Allison. How are you today? I'm well. Has President Trump convinced you to get on board? You know, I, I'm a fan of President Trump. I think I campaigned for him in Ohio. Uh, he's well liked in our district, but this plan is not well liked in Ohio. So you're a no vote? Correct. Has the president contacted you? Uh, he's not contacted me personally, though. You know, I was present when he spoke to the conference in the morning yesterday, and I was also present when he spoke at dinner last night. Okay, so let's talk about that, because we've heard from some people that he was quite persuasive and convincing, and in fact, to uh, Daryl Issa and Tom McClintock, did change their votes. So what did he say to you all? Well, he talked about the importance of doing what we said is repeal and replace Obamacare, and I think, you know, our whole conference is united, and that's what we need to do. The question is, does this bill do that? And the very fact that phase two leans so heavily upon the Secretary of Health and Human Services shows that we haven't repealed it in phase one. And everything depends on, you know, a central planner, basically, that we like. And the reality is, if we don't take action, that we'll be stuck with the same sort of top-down, one-size-fits-all government that Republicans have always have campaigned against. What could the president say today in these last 24 hours to get you on board? Well, you know, this is a framework that is, is driven in part by the uh, Senate rules, and that has pushed this to be a little different than what Republicans really want. And so the real cautionary thing here is, is that we end up doing something that gets through the parliamentary rules of government, uh, i.e. the status quo, instead of doing the change that we all talked about. And so I think one of the important things is that when you talk about one-size-fits-all government, we've done a lot of things to deal with who pays, how much yeah. do they pay, what portion of the cost is shared. We haven't really done enough to drive down costs for consumers, and that's the big thing. The pocketbook issues that affect families, the cost of health care is what's really hurting people. So, I mean, but it sounds like the president can't say anything today to get you on board. <laughs> No, he's, he's been in dialogue uh, with, with Republicans, with conservatives, and this deal has continued to become a better deal. So I will say that House leadership and the president have worked with, with members of Congress, with members of the House, to continue to make this a better, a better deal, not just for the people in Congress, but because they're representing their districts, a better deal for the American people. So you and I'm optimistic that we can do that. Okay, so you think that there might be some changes or modifications in this next 24 hours that would allow you to vote yes tomorrow? I'm optimistic. I think everyone I've talked to wants to be yes on this when votes are called. You know, the president is, as we've heard, using sort of the carrot and the stick. He's being persuasive with people, but he is using the stick against some members, Mark Meadows in particular. Uh, we don't, it was a closed door meeting, so we don't have the actual videotape, but here's the quote of what the president said to him yesterday, I'm going to come after you, but I know I won't have to because I know you'll vote yes. Honestly, a loss is not acceptable, folks. How do you interpret that I'm going to come after you? Uh, he said it with a smile. It was a bit of a joke, but, yeah, there's a serious message there. And I think, you know, what he also said is, you know, and what he said all along is, he wants to have a good deal. He wants to do what he told people, and I think he does want to do what it takes to get Mark Meadows and the rest of the Freedom Caucus and the rest of the, the body here to be united. I mean, frankly, I think we want, ideally, you know, at least 237 outspoken salespeople for this bill, and we're a little ways away from that. Even people that are yes are very tentative in their yeses, and, and it doesn't do what everyone really wants. So some people say that's the art of a good compromise, but a deal that no one likes, to me, is why, why do a deal no one likes? Yeah, but so when the president says there. he's going to come after you, I mean, he means you, basically. He didn't use your name, but he means you. And so are you worried about him campaigning against you, say? Well, I'm pretty new to this. I'm, I'm like a redshirt freshman. I just got in in June. And so... Uh, you know, he's, he's well-liked. He's well-liked in my district. This plan is not well-liked, and I think people can differentiate between the two. Oh, do you? I mean, let's talk about some of those rallies that he has. If he goes to your district and he has one of his, you know, standing room only rallies, how vulnerable does that make you? I don't think he does. I would love to host him in our district. We would love President Trump to come there. He's very well-liked. 
Uh, but people can say, look, we're not expecting everyone that goes to Congress to move lockstep and agree. We didn't campaign necessarily just on a, a pretty catchphrase like repeal and replace. What I told people at home is we need to fix the health care problem. This bill won't do that entirely. It won't fully repeal it and it won't fully replace it. And I think we need to be honest with people because if we're not and we go out and tell people we've repealed it and replaced it and Thursday this is a done deal, they know better. They know this hasn't happened. And then two years from now, when premiums are still going up, we're left with the impression that that's what Republicans wanted to do. And it's far from it. And our leadership isn't saying that either. They're saying there is a phase three, but somehow that gets lost in the messaging. So we really do need to continue to improve. And the net, net effect needs to be how do we get costs under control for families? How do we get more options for people so they're not stuck buying a one size fits all plan with the same yeah. set of essential benefits? And so that they can choose a low cost plan and then add features as they want as their lifestyle changes and they, they age or move through the phases of life. Yeah, look, I understand that that's your dream plan, but this, your leadership is also saying this is it. This is the moment. This is the closest we're ever going to get. So if it doesn't pass, then what? Well, I think if it doesn't pass, we'll look at what it takes to get a, a better plan. I mean, we are very committed to. to solving this problem. We campaigned on it uh, in 2010, 2012, 2014, 2016. So what the, the, the issue is, is this falls a bit short. This was a better plan. The rough draft of this plan was better than what Obamacare is. So if we wanted to stop and say, yeah, but it's better than Obamacare, uh, we would not have made the improvements that have already been made to it. And I'm optimistic we can still make it better yet. So you think the House Freedom Caucus has enough firepower right now to stop this say no to the vote tomorrow, make it not happen, and then come up with something better and make everybody happy? If we had 216 votes, I don't think the president would have been in the, in the, in the Capitol yesterday. There you go. Uh, Congressman Warren Davidson, thank you. We'll be watching very closely to see what happens over the next 24 hours.